Hey there, this is Dr. Evan Osar. And Janice Maddock. How are you guys? Thanks so much for joining us on Facebook Live. If you're watching this, this live, and if you're watching the recording, thanks for joining us. Thanks for giving us the opportunity to share with you the concepts and strategies around working with older clients, especially your older clients in general population that struggle with joint issues like osteoarthritis, mm -hmm. as well as issues around balance. Because again, so many of our older clients are struggling with balance and joint issues. And a lot of their balance issues, as I discussed in the last video, are directly related to joint health. So we're out here in Glassboro, New Jersey, actually getting ready to present at the Medical Fitness Network, their conference around training special populations, especially those fitness professionals like yourself that work with what we call special populations, but it's just called working with the general population because they're the individuals that are presenting to the majority of us with issues like osteoarthritis of the hips, knees, and or spine, which is our topic and expertise, balance issues, as well as other issues associated with non-traditional sort of um, the, the non-healthy crowd, so to speak, the, issue, the, the, the real people, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. And it's those people that we see in our clinic all the time. And usually when we're at conferences like this one and larger ones, these are the, these are the ones, these are the clients that these same folks in attendance are really dealing with that older population. And sometimes the younger population experiencing similar things when it comes to hip issues and shoulders issues and low back issues as we see with our older clients. So even though we talk oftentimes about working with older clients, it's the same relative issues that we see with younger people. Younger mean can be as young as adolescence or pre-adolescence, but definitely in our 20s, 30s, and 40, 40 year old clients as well. So even though oftentimes we discuss working with older clients, the topics that we discuss, the concerns that the clients come to us with are the same as if they're, sometimes if they're 80 and if they're eight, really. Right, right. And, and as Janice is mentioning, we have patients as young as 11 years old and you know people are like, oh, Dr. Oso, how can you help me? I work with athletes. I'm like, well, we work with the same individuals. However, we're seeing individuals that at 11 years old already have hip labral tears, have osteoarthritic changes of their hip at 11 years old. We're working with the gymnasts and dancers at that age that are already showing the signs of degenerative changes of their joints based upon the one thing that you and I are experts at. And that thing is changing our clients' habits. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. And I think, and you and I obviously have shared our own stories in the past with, with this audience about how we've been able to change our habits that were ingrained from us from very young ages, either learning it from another professional or from our own family members and things like that. So really getting, and that's this idea of perspective that we're talking about right now. It's like, understand your client's habits. That's what we talk, we spend a lot of time talking to people about really do a great intake with your clients so you start to learn their habits, even if they don't necessarily see it as a habit, it's just something that they do, but really starting to establish like, what are my client's habits, both from I know they have this intake, and then you start to do your actual assessment with them and start to see what are their movement habits when they do basic activities of daily living, which then of course go into their exercise as well, but squatting, lunging, pushing, pulling, bending, all those basic activities of daily living, however, are driven further into that habit, good or bad, with the exercises they're given, right? Yep, and that's one of the things that, or why we use corrective exercise, is corrective exercise isn't designed to correct people or fix people. It's designed to address those specific habits, those non-optimal and inefficient habits that we've all created because our body, our nervous system is great at creating compensations, and that's what allowed us to survive for so many years when, mm -hmm. when we're being chased by predators or we're trying to catch our food. We needed these strong compensatory strategies and our body still has, those nervous system still has those strategies, but now we don't need the strategies at the same level that we once did to survive. But now, because we're living longer, so to speak, we're, some of these habits are now what are directly contributing to our clients, osteoarthritic changes of the spine, hips, and knees. And that's why our primary focus with our clients is to number one, identify our clients' non-optimal and inefficient habits, yep. and then help them develop more optimal and more efficient habits. And that's really why we use corrective exercise. Mm -hmm. That's how we help our clients develop and achieve more optimal and efficient habits so they can ultimately then work towards successfully accomplishing their health and fitness goals. Right, so this week you did the talk on corrective exercise as it relates to? Balance. and. It's really setting up the foundation. So yesterday on Facebook Live, I discussed the foot tripod. So if you missed that, go check that out. Because I'll show you a very simple yet powerful strategy mm -hmm. for improving how your client is aligning and controlling their foot. 
with most of the pressure underneath the big toe, small toe, and heel. So that way, it forms a virtual tripod, and it doesn't mean the rest of the foot's not on the ground, it just means that the foundation, your entire body weight, body mass is set up on top of a solid foundation. Because many of our older clients, their foot is more, they have either like claw toes or hammer toes because they're using a non-optimal and inefficient strategy for using their feet. Yep. So this is a very simple, easy way that you can help your clients and change balance right away and ultimately change joint health because you're helping them align and control their foundation, which will help them better align and control the hip knee on top of that foundation of the foot tripod. And I know that we always, again, we're talking about older clients, but even with my younger clients, when you show them this easy foot activation, they'll say, oh my gosh, I just feel more grounded. I have a guy who loves this when he's about to play golf because he just feels like when he gets into his stance to golf, he just feels more grounded, feels like he can just stack his body better, and he just feels like he's moving more efficiently by just having that base of his foundation when he's playing golf. And again, this isn't a guy who's, this guy's in his early 50s and been working with him since he was in his 40s, and he loves just activating that foot, and he just feels better on the ground. It's just been able to actually that little thing connected to his brain so much he was able to just progress more quickly through the rest of the stuff he wanted to do, which was awesome. So we definitely know, and then we always, when we're looking in these classes too, working these group classes, we see these people all the time, like they can't keep their toes on the ground. They always wanna bring their toes up, but they're always scrunching their feet when they're doing squats and lunges or anything really. And oftentimes, you know, when you're working with older people or just in the gym in, in general, your clients have their shoes on, right? So you can't always see that they're doing it. But however, you're likely to know that at least one person in your class or one client that you're training that day is squeezing their toes when they're trying to do the exercises you're giving them to do. So just cueing them, even if you don't take their shoes off, just cueing them that idea of getting that foot tripod even inside their shoe can be so important. Absolutely. And so it's, it's not whether or not you can take their shoes off because sometimes if you're working with 30 seniors, you may not be able to take their shoes off. But if you can give them a simple cue, focus on elongating the toes, Keep that pressure equal, big toe, small toe, heel. Feel your feet in your shoes on the ground when you're doing whatever patterns you're using in a group. So if you're doing a squat or a lunge or a bend type pattern, just help them spread those feet out and encourage them when they get home. Do some self work, do some myofascial release, maybe do some self mobilization on your foot. Allow the foot to be more free, to get those toes longer, allow the foot to be more as set up as a tripod so that way you're creating a foundation for success because if the foot's not right the rest of the kinetic chain will not be right so give them a very simple and easy strategy release the calves gastroc long toe flexors as i demonstrated in the video yesterday show them how to get the foot tripod if you can have them take their shoes off if it's safe for them to do that feel free to have them take their shoes off as long as they have the permission you have the opportunity and permission to do so have them experience their feet on the floor. Even if they don't walk around, just standing with their feet on the floor and give them a different perspective, so to speak, or proprioceptive input from the mm -hmm. bottom of their feet, it can make a profound difference in their balance and ultimately their joint health. Right, I know one of the things you're gonna, I'm gonna give people a sneak preview of in tomorrow's talk, because tomorrow's talk is me about working with your clients with osteoarthritis of the hip and spine, correct? And one of the things we kind of talked about is how do we really want to get people engaged with this information? Because osteoarthritis isn't sexy. However, it is a big part of the aging process and everybody wants to remain young and so we make cosmetic changes and we think if we do cardio we're gonna stay young however our joints can show we used to say our age right we used to say like oh in your 20s it starts it goes on your 30s or 40s and then as you get older you just you just degenerate correct however we have to I think if we bring this to the forefront of those people who want to remain ageless we'll say or or recess how their age is affecting them if we start to talk to them about actual joint health, which is a huge thing as people get older is their actual joint health, we get people to start thinking about their joints as part of that I don't want to age process. Right, right, right. And it's, and it's again, it's a very simple concept for you and I as, as health and fitness professionals to understand, but we know that health doesn't come from what you, what you do cosmetically or you do with plastic surgery. It's what you do with inside. It's a food you eat. It's your mindset, right, inside. It's your core strength, the inside. Joint health is the exact same thing. It starts from the inside, it starts from our habits. It's creating, helping our clients create a more optimal and efficient strategy for posture and movement, which will ultimately relate to their joint health. And you and I are in the best position. And that's why this information is so important and so important for you to get this out to your community, get it out to your current clients, start educating them so they, they can then in, 
in turn educate their friends and family because they obviously have friends and family that are their age and probably experiencing the same sort of condition. But that way, that's how you really set yourself up as an expert, as a specialist, and start to draw more like-minded people that need, want, and will pay you top dollar for your expert expertise and differentiate yourself from all those other individuals in the industry that are just personal trainers and really get away from that sort of box gym mentality where people are just going after weight loss and you know give me the new sexiest workout so I can get a good sweat where you're really helping people change their lives because you're changing how they feel how they move and ultimately mm -hmm. and the activities that they're doing yep so if you can't join us tomorrow or this weekend or Sunday when when Dr. Osar is actually doing his presentation about osteoarthritis we're gonna be in uh, Mesa Arizona on April 26th, we're actually going to be doing a pre-conference about balance and osteoarthritis, a whole day pre-conference, and then we'll also be doing a balance class on that Sunday, I believe, as well, at the conference itself. And then, of course, there's always our Integrative Corrective Exercise Instructor Program, which is our three-day course. It's a kind of an introduction to the integrative movement system, and we specifically talk about working with your clients who have <clears throat> osteoarthritis. And then, of course, there's always our Integrative Movement Specialist Certification, where we really go in-depth into how do you assess how do you correct, how do you progress your clients so that they can really return successfully and efficiently to those activities they really need, want, and love to do. Yep. So we hope to see you at one of the workshops either later this month in Mesa, Arizona. We're going to be in Orlando, Florida in a couple of weeks as well. Correct, at SCW. And then we also have two more opportunities this year to do the three-day course intensive, which is based around training the older population with osteoarthritic changes of their spine, hips, and shoulders, as well as the as, as well as around balance and then also we have the integrated movement specialist one more course started this year we're already in the middle of one course we're starting another section in september so hopefully we'll see you at one of those workshops and in the meantime just stay tuned to facebook live here stay tuned to our newsletter because we're going to continue throughout the year as, as we've done in the past give you great information around training the general population but again as we said it's because it's a principle-based system we're giving you the perspective to work with any population. So even if you do train athletes, this information is the same exact information that we share with the athletes that we work with. Whether they, they're young athletes, you know, and, and they're adolescent, whether they're teen athletes, collegiate, and even the professional athletes we work with, it's no different. Our approach is exactly the same. Identify their non-optimal and inefficient habits, help them use corrective exercise to develop more optimal and efficient habits, and then help them progress appropriately to the fundamental movement patterns that they ultimately need to do to get back or continue, mm -hmm. successfully continue, the activities they need to, want to, and or love to do. All right, so cool, have a great weekend, and we hope to see you soon. If not, make sure you check out all of our Facebook Live videos from earlier this week where Evan really goes over those strategies you can use with your clients and get started today. Make it a great day, we'll see you later this week. Bye-bye.